Are you creating YouTube videos with CapCut? Well, in this video, I've got you covered with CapCut video editing specifically for YouTube videos. Let's get into it. I'm gonna open up CapCut here on my desktop. I'm using a Mac, but since CapCut is available for PC as well, most of these steps are going to be pretty much identical. My name is Meredith and on this channel, I'm here to help you look good, sound good, and feel good on camera so you can build your thriving YouTube channel. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound because there are a lot of really cool bells and whistles and effects inside of CapCut, but you're here to create a good YouTube video, not a gimmicky TikTok trend. If you're using CapCut for the very first time, this just looks like a big blank screen. One of the first things that I want to do is just make sure that I have this set up for a YouTube video. So over on the way right hand side, we have this little button that says modify. I'm going to open that up. This is where we can give a project name. And I'm gonna keep the default setting here to keep my media in the original place. That means it's not gonna create a duplicate somewhere taking up space on my hard drive. And then I wanna make sure that I'm going to select the ratio as a 16 to nine video. You can see we have a lot of different options here, but for a YouTube video, we want it to be 16 to nine. And our resolution, we're just going to keep this at 30 frames per second. Color space is gonna stay the same and I'm going to turn free layer on because that's just how I prefer to do it inside of CapCut. So you probably wanna turn yours on too if you're following along. At the bottom, let's hit save. Now that I have all of my proper settings, let's import a couple of clips. I'm just gonna hit that import button. Let's locate the clips I want to use. They are in my inbox. Here we go. So I'm not going to edit an entire YouTube video that would make this video pretty long. I have a little bit of A-roll here and a little bit of B-roll here that we're gonna use. So let's start with the A-roll. I'm just gonna select this here. I'm gonna add this little plus button where it says add to track. And this is just going to add this clip down to the track to the actual timeline. CapCut does give us some shortcuts down here where we can split our clip and it will delete everything to the left or delete everything to the right. And there is a pro version of CapCut that I have not yet played with. We're just using the free version, but it looks like if you upgrade to pro, you can remove pauses, repeated words, and things like that, which is pretty cool. I love that they're incorporating that, but we don't need it at least not for this video. So I'm just gonna hit got it here and okay down there. Then the first thing that we wanna do is get a good rough cut of this video. That means getting rid of any repeated words or mistakes or restarts, which happens with me quite a bit. So let's just go through our timeline here and see what we can eliminate. So right here, I restarted. I'm going to hit this button right here, which is gonna be a control B or just a regular split clip. And then I can select this and hit delete and it will go away. So I'm just going along and hitting control B to split my clip so I can get rid of anything that I want to get rid of here. So you can see how I just made two cuts, one here, one here. I want to get rid of this part in the middle. So I'm just going to hit delete. And then these two clips are now going to come together like a magnet. Trimming is when we want to just take the end kind of like a handle and just kind of move it. I don't know if you could see what was happening there, but instead of splitting, splitting, and then deleting, you can take the end of your clip and move it to actually just kind of trim the end a little bit. And you can do it on the end of a clip too, just like this, same exact thing, just move it wherever you want it to be. It does really help to zoom in on your timeline pretty much as far as you can go because you want to be able to see your waveforms. So right here at this cut, I'm zoomed in as far as I can go and you can see where my voice kind of trails off here and then picks up here. So if you're wondering where do I actually make a cut pretty much when you have trailed off completely without cutting off any of your words, you don't really want any extra space there where there's nothing happening, even if it's only for a couple of frames. As you're moving along on your rough cut here, you might find a piece of your video that you want to move to another part of your video. And 
because you know how to split your clips, you can do this really easily. So I have this clip selected right here in the middle. I can just click and drag it and move it anywhere else on the timeline. You can see how it's moving things around just to make space for it. So I can put it over here, wherever I want it to go, we'll put it, we'll put it right there and drop it down. So I have a little bit of B-roll to add, but I'll get to that in just a moment because we're still working on our basic edit where we create a rough cut of our video that's usable and we're kind of gonna build from there. So I have about 31-ish seconds of footage here as my example sample video. So this is just talking head, um, A-roll style footage and nothing fancy is really happening. But let me just show you a couple of the things things that you may want to do at this stage. First of all, you have this scaling option over here on the right hand side. So this is going to zoom in or out if you want to, you know, depending on how you record it, if you record it in 4K and you want to be able to zoom in, you can use that scaling feature there. But you also have the ability to just grab the corners of the video and you have this rotation button here as well. And all of this is also over here on the right hand side. You can see negative seven degrees rotation. There are a lot more settings over here, but for a basic YouTube video, I just want to keep this very simple. You also have some audio adjustments that you might want to do depending on your audio quality and your recording. You can see that my microphone peaked just a little bit where it is like orange or red. That means that it's um, getting up into the range of the, of the mic where it's like a little bit distorted. It's probably going to hurt people's ears as they're listening to this. And for a little tiny portion of the video like this, I would probably just leave it. But if your whole video is peaking like this and all of your waveforms are going into the orange and red, you're probably going to want to try and bring your volume down a little bit or even try some of the audio effects that CapCut has. So for example, I could just go ahead and split this clip on either side of this audio issue and then just bring this volume down just a touch. And you can see my waveforms moving down to where they're a little bit more even with all of the other waveforms and they're no longer gonna be peaking. So that's an easy audio adjustment that you can make, but it's totally gonna depend on your own recording. I always like to edit with my volume right around here in the middle um, of my computer. That way I know that if my if I have my volume turned all the way up as I'm editing, then it's probably too quiet. Like the actual video output when, I, when this goes on YouTube is going to be too quiet for the viewers. And on the other end of the spectrum, if my volume is set way down here and I'm editing and it sounds okay to me, then when I export it, it's probably not going to be at the right volume for my viewers and it will end up being too loud. So just pay attention to your audio and only adjust it if you need to. Now that you have a good rough cut created inside of CapCut, now is the time to watch your video from beginning to end and look for any little tiny things that you might have missed during the initial rough cut, specifically in between your clips. Now I already showed you how to trim your clips, but you're going to go through and really look at those waveforms and really make sure that you don't have any extra frames in here that are going to be kind of like awkward silences. So we're just going to clean these up a little bit and then we'll go ahead and add our background music. Now, although CapCut does have an audio section, I always use Epidemic Sound for my YouTube videos because Epidemic Sound has a great selection of real music in every genre imaginable. And the best part is I don't run into any copyright issues because my Epidemic Sound license covers my YouTube channel. It covers TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere that I put my video. My YouTube video is part of my own personal brand. I'm not looking for trending sounds or anything like that. That's why I always go to Epidemic Sound. So I'm going to browse through some of my favorite tracks here on Epidemic Sound. I'm going to hit download. All I have to do is open up CapCut and import this as a background track. Now, I can't just leave it here. It's going to be way too loud. Hey, 
let's open up this audio tab and bring the volume down. Kind of depends on the video and it definitely depends on the music itself. I've been a longtime customer of Epidemic Sound and there's a link down in the description for you to grab a 30 day trial for yourself and try it out with your next CapCut edit. Now I mentioned that I had a little bit of B-roll to throw in that will help break things up for the viewer, make things a little more interesting. And then there's always the show don't tell component. So there's this one part where I'm talking about my stream deck. I wanna add my B-roll in. So instead of hitting that plus button, I'm just gonna take this and drag it down to the track and I can visually see where it is and where it's gonna drop. Of course, we can always move it around, but it's going to be on its own track and it's layered like a cake. So what you see on the top of the cake of the track is going to be what's visible. It'll switch for us. A Little bit of B-roll. Now I like to use my stream deck for we can put this wherever we want it to start. Now I like to use my stream deck for editing videos. I do this a lot with ScreenFlow. If I want to trim this up a little bit, let's see. I kind of like where it just starts to come into focus. So I'm going to trim the beginning. So right when I start to talk about the stream deck, I am bringing the stream deck B-roll onto the screen. Now, one of the cool things about CapCut that I love is all of the features and functions that you can do with text. And I'm gonna show you how to create something like this. Here, and this is my sample example footage. Under text in the top left, and then down under auto captions, I'm going to choose create. So you can see that I have the captions on the screen now, and you can edit these however you want them to look. They have some presets here, or you can just adjust it however you want it to be like to match your own branding and whatnot um, but what I want to do is only just have my text on the screen for one little part at the beginning so I'm going to delete all of the other captions here with just this remaining caption we can adjust the styling of this and there's a couple of different presets that you can use here or you can just make your own custom color, something to fit your branding. You can also change your font or whatever you wanna do there. But what's really cool is what you can do with the animation. Now, before I get there, let me just size this up a little bit. And then under animation, you have the ability to have an animation in. So whenever this text starts to appear on the screen, you have your in animation and then you have your out animation. So that's what happens when it's gonna leave your screen or you have this loop function and you can use all of these. So if you make your text nice and big like this and then come under animation, you can see samples and of what is, these things would is, look like. And, and, and is, we don't wanna be too gimmicky here, right? But I do like this typewriter and feature this is, and down here at the bottom, you can speed it up or slow it down. And this is my sample. Right, that's pretty cool. And then on the out, I think we could do the sunset footage that makes it go down. And then you can also have this loop where you're gonna have this effect that's sort of happening for the duration that it's on the screen. So for example, you have tremble, which is I think example. the one that I used there that just makes them wiggle a little bit. And you can change example. the speed down here at the bottom and just do whatever works for you. Now under text, again, I have my text as uh, white and then I can give it a background. We'll select a color. We're gonna go with this blue color. And then this is what it looks like. Part of here, and this is my sample example footage for. Now, if you've learned something new so far, make sure you hit that like button. It helps other people find this video on YouTube as well. And make sure you follow me here for more video creation tips just like this one. But if you're creating YouTube videos to grow your thriving YouTube channel, my best YouTube audience growth tip is coming up. So stick around. Now, one of the things we see a lot with YouTube videos is your lower thirds. For example, I have a custom custom branded lower third where it's like my name comes in. So when I introduce myself, my name animates in with my logo and then it animates out. So I created this in a completely different program with a template 
But if you have those, all you have to do is drop those in as regular files and just move them wherever you want them to go. CapCut also has stickers where you can find some of those lower third type of items. For example, you could add the subscribe button. So this is going to come in, animate, and then go out again. And then all you have to do is just resize it and put it wherever you want it to be on the screen. And I also have a little bit of B. So you do have those lower thirds type of options right there within CapCut, which is pretty cool. Now CapCut is going to automatically save your video file. You don't have to save this anywhere. In fact, and in, in the top left, it tells you the time stamp of when it was last auto saved. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to put this on YouTube or any other platform, you do have to export this so that you have an actual video file to upload. So in the top right, you're going to choose export. You can choose the title of your video. You can choose the file location for this video to be exported to. And then since this is a 1080 video, it's the resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080. And that's probably going to show up because that's the project setting. And bitrate, we're just going to stick with recommended codec is H.264. My format is going to be an MP4 file frame rate 30 frames per second. That's based on the actual settings that we modified at the very beginning. And then I'm just going to hit export down here at the bottom. Now it does tell you how big estimated this file size is going to be. This is only a 32 second video, so it's not going to be that big. But if you are creating a longer video and you're having trouble with having a really big file size, you could come up to bitrate and lower that bitrate and it's going to lower the quality of the video, but then it will also lower the actual file size as well. So I'm going to hit export down here at the bottom. And that was super quick. Let's open the folder that we saved it to. Hey, it's Meredith here. And this is my now there's a special link down in the description to check out Epidemic Sound for yourself so that you can integrate good background music into the editing of your YouTube videos with CapCut, just like I showed you here in this video. But if you're creating YouTube videos to build your thriving YouTube channel, the most powerful way to do that is to build a library of binge worthy videos on your channel. And if that sounds kind of daunting, I have a video breaking down exactly how to create a binge worthy YouTube channel so that every video that you do create generates new viewers and new subscribers to your channel. So I will queue that up for you here and link to it down below and I'll see you there.